All right. So I got John Wetcher here, who is a PTBI student who's absolutely crushed it. I think you hit, what, 10K within your first eight weeks of the program, something even crazier than that. What was yeah. it exactly? Um, I had 28 clients in my first two months. Yeah. Insane. Absolutely blew up his business. And he's actually a friend of mine that I met in San Diego. And the story of how we met was crazy because I was in Chicago at a rave and I happened to be standing behind someone in the will call line and they they were unable to get an extra ticket. I happened to have an extra ticket, just gave that ticket to what happened to be his friend. And then we got connected, found out we were in the same circle of friends in San Diego. And now, you know, he's crushing his business. So John, it's, it's been crazy, our story getting to know each other. But, you know, how did you get into coaching? Essentially, how did you get to where you are today? Always had a love for fitness, especially coming out of high school, playing sports, joined the military, was in special operations, which just solidified even more of the importance of physical fitness and whatnot, my love for it, to then once I finished college, I graduated with a BS in exercise science. So it's always just been a passion. And after I finished contracting for the government for a bit, it was just a natural move into why don't I pursue something that I'm passionate about and love and want to help others do so. And uh, funny enough, some of the coaches on your team, I had actually personal trained as well when I was in San Diego. So it just like connected us even uh -huh. more that our circles were overlap. I love it, man. So take me along a timeline of your journey. Uh, let's, let's just say out of high school, did you go to college or did you go straight into the military? Straight into the military. So I spent my summer that I got out of high school just doing brutal workouts every single day to prep for selection process to go because I went right into the military then right into special operations served for four and a half years got out started going to school for my uh, bachelor's in exercise science like I said from there just continued bodybuilding marathon running powerlifting just all of it fascinated me um just kept growing growing to the point where I was like you know what I see Zach he's killing it he's sending you know i saw the ads and whatnot and it was just that you know like i have a expertise in this as well to a certain degree why not use this to make money instead of reinventing the wheel and trying to learn something new why not do something i love and if i could just get help within the organizational part of it that's kind of where it was so contracted for four years for blackwater and after afghanistan came to a close um i served my last tour there came back and i was like you know it's time to just be my own boss and work strictly for myself and how could i not answer your ads, you know? I love it. I love it. So what made you decide to get into, to get a degree in bachelor science and what exercise science and what were you doing for work in the meantime? Were you just living off of the GI bill or what, what did that period look like for you? Partially the GI bill, but I also own a security business where I do executive protection for CEOs, high value clients, celebrities, things like that. So in between going to school, I spend my summers and winters traveling for clients and things like that, the ones that I could pick up or even doing things like uh, search and rescue for disaster relief, things like that. And uh, it also kind of came to a point where the um, bachelor in exercise science, that was just, I could use the GI Bill to get something that was interesting to me and that I enjoyed learning and growing my knowledge in. So it was kind of a no brainer there. So in between the GI Bill and then still working for this security business. But like I said, once Afghanistan came to a close, it was like, I was kind of over the thought of having to travel to constantly mm -hmm. make my money. Uh, so it was just no brainer into like, why not dive into personal training? If I already have the knowledge, why not just hop on in? Gotcha. So you got your bachelor's degree just out of genuine curiosity or just kind of following a passion. You didn't exactly know that, hey, starting an online coaching business is exactly what I want to do. You're just like, hey, why right. not? At exactly. It was money being left on the table if I didn't go use my GI bill. So if anyone out there that's listening, go use that thing. It's just money on the table. I love it. I love it. So at what point did you decide to start an online business? I know for a while you were doing in-person training. I'm assuming that, that during that time is also when you're doing probably security work and getting your bachelor's degree. Is that correct? Correct. So then how did you transition to online coaching? So I started personal training in person. Then I've kind of picked up a couple online clients and just without the organization that, you know, PTBI brought me the, you know, bring it all to one place. It didn't seem plausible at the moment I was doing it, just running through email and spreadsheets and it was like how could I bring on an abundance of clients if this was 
the knowledge, the path that the only path I knew how to go after or pursue it as. Mm -hmm. So more focus went into in person and that was just, it felt like a waste of time almost where not a waste of time for my clients, but a waste of time. And like, I'm spending hours out of my day where I could be investing it into something else. That's why I spend an hour with one client and I can spend an hour on five to 10 or whatnot and just maximize my time with money. I love it. Now, I know when you guys started with PTBI, it felt like you got that one piece of information that was missing that allowed you to catapult. And you've mentioned this, that the biggest piece for you is just having that organization of like how to manage your clients in the back end, the systems to use. So what was your secret to success that allowed you to scale the 28 clients within the first two months? Because there's a lot of people listening to this that would like to see that success as well. Like know a lot of people. Did you hit a lot of people up? Like what did it for you? It was a mix. So I had a decent following before I started just on my Instagram before I even switched it over to a business platform. But I had people messaging me throughout the years at a curiosity of if I was training people or whatnot or asking if I would. And at the time being, I wasn't interested. So when I did kind of switch everything over and start advertising that I was actually going to start taking on clients, one of the big thrusts into that that was helpful was like San Diego. San Diego is obviously so fitness driven and so many people there want to have the beach body and whatnot, or it's just a little bit easier to get into that calling within San Diego. There's more mm -hmm. opportunity there, I felt like. And then with the in-person, it just, like I said, naturally kind of pushed me into why not pursue more online. And I also didn't have uh, like a business plan for it as well. It was kind of just like, I have a knowledge about it. Let me be able to share this and advertise and whatnot, where what real PTBI really helped with was structure a business plan for me of like, how we're going to go about this, what I should be charging off the bat, the different things I should be offering with that on top of how to build knowledge in the trainerized or whatever apps I may use. Having a coach to be able to talk you through those sticking points of things was super helpful. Using the 1v1 coaching um, on top of the uh, group calls. The group calls were really useful into how to advertise, you know, how to post, when to post, what to post about, things like that. And then having the 1v1 calls was super beneficial into any sticking points of, I already knew the knowledge of how to be a personal trainer. It was the business side of it that I really needed help on. And that's exactly what PTBI was, was help organize it all, put it in all in front of me where I can have all my clients at one space and be able to see everything in front of me compared to whiteboards necessarily having to write everything down. Obviously not saying, knocking whiteboards are still used to this day as a tool but like it just put it all right there. yeah I, I got my whiteboard right here you know it's funny man is we have this old course that we use in ptbi uh it's called the online fitness coach mastery course we give it away for free it's an old course that i built a long time ago and in that course i'm talking to my clients how to use their spreadsheet tracker that i built and our students was like what is your opinion on this spreadsheet track i'm like dude i built that spreadsheet like way before trainerize was even a thing like we had to do it old school back before like you know 2016 2015 before those yeah. came around so i feel you on that but one thing i remember this was the funniest post it was funny because it was just incredible you made a post of you holding holding these medals and you're like, whatever fitness goal you want to achieve, I've done it. So I'm your guy. And I'm like, that is such a prime example of being a leader and showing people that you are the example of what you can deliver. So tell me about your own accolades of personal achievement and how important do you think that is for fitness coaches to be able to market that to their clients? I think it's huge because no one wants to be following someone who isn't following their own advice to someone or has achieved the things that your clients want to achieve. So my accolades, starting back from the military and then being in special operations, following that, got big into bodybuilding, powerlifting. So people really started following me for my powerlifting where, you know, deadlifting consistently over 600, squats 500, benching close to the force, things like that. It just showed that I'm doing the work with you. And I think that's one of the biggest things that I'll also tell my clients as well is like, if you're ever struggling, know I'm out here struggling with you. Like it's, I'm not sitting here giving you guidance that I'm not following as well, even at the beginner level of things. So so got into ultra marathon running as well, which you don't see people my size doing. So like just to give people this message of like, I'm telling you to be uncomfortable, but I'm consistently staying uncomfortable in my journey as well, that I'm not resting on any type of accolades as well. So competing in bodybuilding, powerlifting, ultra marathon running, being in special operations, doing those types of things. It's, and this isn't a call to tell people like, you know, go join the military or anything like that. But it's just like, I've constantly put myself through tests mentally, whether it was through an organization like the military or me just taking it upon myself to just go out and run 26 miles on a Sunday just to remind myself of my, I got to be in charge of all this and what goes on in my life. And then preaching that message to my clients, it just gives them someone that they want to follow. Mm -hmm. So if you're out there, just, I also started at first doing 
the very cookie cutter posts of like, here's a good warm up, here's a this, here's a that. And I realized like that ain't shit. People want to see you. Mm -hmm. They want to see the authentic side of you. Is this the one I want to work with? Not someone that's just knowledge, but I want to talk to. I want to bounce off someone that can fuel me. And one thing that really stuck with my clients is the motivational messages throughout the week as well. Of like, remember why we're doing this. Remember the place we started and where you're at now and where we want to go. And then just having someone to go along with that journey with them as well. It just caters to them so much more and what they, they're passionate to try and achieve something better for themselves. Dude, I could not agree more. And I wish more people followed that advice. I tell people all the times, like, like for many people, fitness coaching is their very first time ever being in a leadership position and they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to lead by example. And right. I'm like, okay, you need to track your own macros. You need to, you know, go on sure. your own fitness transformation. You need to be a living, walking example of what it's like to live the lifestyle that you are trying to sell. And so many people are missing the mark because they haven't yet done any sort of transformation themselves. And it's like, no, you have to lead by example. And exactly. uh, dude, in that authentic side often comes out when you are going through your own personal journey and you are creating content, speaking to yourself. And then that content exactly. then resonates with the people who are following you as well. I mean, I, I could not agree more. That was, that was fire stuff. But now, you know, you moved from San Diego, you're in Nashville, you got a full-time online coaching business. What does your life look like right now? What are the next steps for you? What's the plan? And where do you want to go from here? The plan is to always keep growing and just never be satisfied. Just constantly being a student. One thing that I think it's easy to get wrapped up into is when you start seeing success, start thinking that you have an understanding of things where it's just constantly being hungry in the sense of like reminding yourself there's still so much more to gain, so much more to grow. If I can do it to 10K, why can't I do it to 20K, to 30K, to 40K and just keep growing that and just continue growing in this aspect of what what is the best way I can reach my clients, not necessarily future clients, but my current clients as well in the sense of like, how can I teach you better? And mm -hmm. one thing that you talked about being a leader is being able to adapt to each client because if you're trying to sell this one size fits all, it ain't going to work. It's just not because everyone is different genetically, mentally. It's you have to find what works for people. And some people it's being in their ass. They want the person that's, you know, dedicated to going up for them and being that person who's constantly like, you didn't get it in today. You need to go do this. You need to get that. You're falling off, whatever to the other people, more positive reinforcement of like, you're doing great. Keep going. You know, we failed here, but it's okay. We're going to keep pushing the consistency side of it, whatever. So just learning how to adapt to each and every client to get them the best results, the better results they get, the better results you get. Yep. It's just all within that mindset of just constantly being a student, learning from the right people which is huge. It's like, you know, with one thing that I was super skeptical about coming on to even PTPI was like, is this the right way to go? Is, am I going to, is this money going to come back? And one thing that I think PTBI nails is you guys bring in an abundance of coaches, an abundance of people who've had success and people who have their niche things within that success to come to where it just gave you a plethora of information that, and it's not limited in the sense of like, okay, this week I might want to focus on this. The next week I'm going to focus on this or whatever. And just constantly being a student. So even though I found success, just not being satisfied with it and keep coming back to learning from the coaches that you assembled. I love it man. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. There was something that you mentioned there about like, you need to be a service to your current clients. And I heard a quote about a week or two ago that was like, you want to know where your next lead is going to come from? Your next lead is a current client that's on your roster right now. If you Definitely. focus on your current roster and focus on your current clients, your next lead will come to your doorstep. And I, I couldn't agree more. And the other thing too, speaking of, you know, investing in coaches, investing in mentors, my personal philosophy is, dude, you should just invest in every coach, even if it's a bad one. Like I invested into a mentor about like six months ago and I didn't really get much. It was 12K for this mentor. There wasn't a ton that I learned, but there was one thing that really changed and they told us to get on ManyChat, which ManyChat is a platform that allows my team members to access my DMs and my messages without actually logging into my account, which for at the time, it wasn't that big of a game changer. But dude, that one piece of advice six months ago that I pretty much paid 12,000 for is saving my ass this Week because no one can log into my Instagram, but all of my team members can still manage my DMs on ManyChat. So I'm like, we're still able to, but calls. So it's like, oftentimes you should just be learning from everybody and not worry about, you know, is the money going to come back? Because you just need one piece of information that's going to unlock the next level for you, whether you're going to use Definitely. it or use it later. Definitely. And that's a thing that I've been preaching to as well is that it's not about the looking at the full journey. It's just, what's the next step? Yep. Yep. Kind of like, what's the next step? Because that next step is going to unfold that goal for you. So it'll 
all just come back. I love it, man. I love it. Well, John, thank you so much. Where can people find you on Instagram? Uh, my Instagram handle is bebadfitness, B-E-B-A-D-F-I-T-N-E-S-S. And uh, from there, you know, that's where I basically shuffle everything out of. So anyone who wants to find me, anyone who wants to chat, bounce things off each other, please come my way. Awesome, man. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you, man.